it's me, Kani Sirka, and I'm really excited to be here today because I'm very excited about this video because we are going to be talking about anxiety. But before we continue, please remember to like this video, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel by pressing the subscribe button. Awesome. So as I was saying, we're going to be discussing anxiety. Hey, Kani's. Oh, hey. Uh, hey, anxiety. Yeah, hey, I, listen, I just came to tell you that this video is probably going to do really badly and no one's gonna watch it and no one's gonna like subscribe to your channel or comment and basically this video is gonna be a complete fail and it's gonna be so embarrassing for you everyone's gonna be like oh my god what happened to Kaniz? she's become such a loser uh, well I, I, I thank you for the observations or the warning i guess um i appreciate you being here <laughs> thank you and i also want to tell you that um just like like watch what you say because um like because it's a very sensitive topic and if you say something stupid then um people might cancel you okay i, I, I won't and then and then like you'll get cancelled and then a society will ostracize you and then you'll run out of work and no one will want to work with you and then and then your parents will like disown you your family will disown you you'll have nowhere to go wow that uh, that escalated really quickly <laughs> and yeah basically <laughs> Okay, all right, I'll, I'll be careful, don't, don't worry. Anything else, any what, last minute? Oh yeah, yeah, just uh, one more thing. Um, your eyeliner is not symmetrical. Sorry, what? My, my, eye, my winged eyeliner is not symmetrical. Like, it looks like you were like, uh, it looks like that's what you did when you put. All right, you know what, thank you. Thanks for joining, I'm just gonna make sure you get off the screen. Hey, before you go, I just wanna say that you suck. And no one likes your work and they told you your accent's so fake. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was my anxiety. I don't know how she got uh, the link to the Zoom call. But anyway, as I was saying, we're going to be talking about anxiety in this video today because it's something so many of us have gone through in the last year, especially with the pandemic um, happening. And what I really love about this video is that we will be talking to five uh, psychiatrists today. So those are people who are qualified, who are professionals in the field, who have been working in the field of psychology and psychiatry for many years. Um, they are fantastic, knowledgeable people on the subject. And so I'm very excited to be talking to people who know what and have dealt with people with anxiety and know what anxiety is really about. So let's get down to it. What is anxiety? What is anxiety? What happens to my body? What happens to my mind? <laughs> so I'd like to welcome our esteemed uh, panelists. Uh, they are experts in their field. They are professionals. They are qualified psychiatrists who are here today. Uh, they're going to help us understand better what anxiety is, especially what you know the anxiety we face going through the pandemic. So thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Prasad Rao. Uh, welcome. Uh, Dr. Vishal Chabra, welcome, sir. Uh, Thank you. Dr. Ranjan Bhattacharya, welcome to you. Dr. Paneer Salwan, and lastly, Dr. Devendra Save. Thank you so much. I'm genuinely excited to do this, and I really want like the people who are following uh, us, the comedians, to like have some sort of understanding, or uh, like, like almost like a manual, like I said earlier, to like what anxiety is. Because, you know, we talk about depression a lot, uh, and I realize I don't even have enough information about anxiety. Uh, so I'm personally very excited to uh, get the information um, that you guys will be imparting. So I'll just start with the questions. <laughs> and yeah, the sure. first thing I like we I wanted to know was <clears throat> very basic. What is anxiety, and why has it seen a rapid rise in India over the years? So as the uh, word anxiety, it, it has been uh, derived from the Latin word which is known as anxietas, which actually means that you are choking or throttling, troubling, and being upset. So you're having some kind of feeling that your heart is pounding and you are about going to die. So this leads to, and as, as we said already, the anxiety begets anxiety. It goes like a vicious cycle. So initial anxiety, panicky state, heart pounding, throttling sensation, respiratory distress, choking. You are thinking that what happened to me? Do I have some cardiac attack or else? So it again, it is like a chain of action, positive feedback loop. And it goes again and again. Actually, the simplest uh, emotion which you told very clearly is just before you come to a program just you are about to just step into this 
that little bit of access, whether I will do it properly, whether I'll smile properly, whether my face comes normally, whether the lights goes off, whether the mic is proper, that is a normal emotion. I'm not calling anxiety. That's a normal thing. I want to tell everyone that anxiety is so normal that unless we have a certain normal anxiety, we don't perform to the best. We always call it a you anxiety or ideal anxiety. With an ideal anxiety, whatever we set our goals, we perform well. But what we are, you are referring as an anxiety, we call it an abnormal fear of unknown or a fear that whether I will be able to perform. What do we really call a disorder? If it yeah. impairs you, it impairs your function. It impairs your function to the extent, for example, whatever you are supposed to do, you are not able to do. A housewife can't cook, can't go out of the house. A student can't write the exam completely. And so on and so forth. That's called an abnormal anxiety. Um, so doctor, I want to ask maybe uh, Dr. Vishal Chabra, like, how, why do you think there's a rise in uh, anxiety in India over the, over the past few years? Yeah, we're coming from agricultural society to more of cognitive-based society or we're a services-based society. There's a lot of cognitive work we have to do. So like this program also we are doing, it's a cognitive program. We're not doing anything physically except speaking. We're sitting and talking, we're sharing our ideas. So if you look at the economy we're doing, it's all knowledge economy. So most of the stuff you're doing is a lot of brain-based stuff, you know, thinking-based stuff. And because you have to do that, there are a lot of deadlines. You have to, you have to, you know, deadlines, projects, and you do a lot of creativity to create a lot of thought processes. That creates a lot of anxiety. Imagine you're doing in a farm. You're doing the same thing your ancestors were doing and ancestors were doing for, for hundreds of years. You know, pretty much sure this is going to happen, this is going to happen. But now we're in an economy where everybody has to do, we don't know how the things will pan out. So you have to always think through, think ahead, plan, replan, you know, change the plans. There's so many things you have to do. So that puts a lot of pressure in all of us. And that's how anxiety is going up. So we have, now, not in Corona, but before Corona times, everybody has to get up early to beat the traffic. <laughs> then they have to wish that somehow today there's not much of a traffic jam so that you reach home on time. You have to finish all the things in between, all the meetings. And in between, if you have to go anywhere else to meet somebody else, it's a project in itself for a big city yeah. person. So you have to do so much of planning, you know, to think of right. everything. And that puts a lot of stress. Can uh, one of the doctors please explain to me, like, what, is, what are some of the typical causes of anxiety? First thing is we are biologically predisposed. By that, what I mean is there are some genes which are responsible in some individuals to cause this disorder. Now, once you say biologically predisposed, you are also hinting that you need not be blamed for yourself. There is something which you got as a hereditary. So you can always say, my mom gave it, my dad gave it, or my exactly. uncle gave it. Okay, that's fine. But biology actually means that these individuals' genes are responsible for certain neurohormones imbalance in the brain. But they're also what we call psychological conditioning. I give a very typical example. If a child is... Uh, grown in where a mother is highly anxious, constantly yeah. worrying. Like you gave some examples, like is my child eating food properly? Does she have, he or she have something in the school? And constantly, did you lock your door? Did you wash your hands? Mm. If it goes beyond certain point, that child is again predisposed. The third thing, which is more of a psychological thing is sometimes parents without their knowledge, like even if you are induced say, compete and get only Oscar award. Your acting is good, but get only Oscar. <laughs> By your mom says that unless you get Oscar, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm saying, I'm putting an example yeah. with the day-to-day -day life. That pressure. So today's world, you asked right in the beginning, why is anxiety increasing? The anxiety is increasing because the competitiveness, the lack of opportunities. And for example, I, I would just take one example. Medical entrance. 1 lakh people compete. And all this 1 lakh will think that they are going to get a medical seat. Yeah. But there are only, say, 2,000 seats. What would happen? See, that, and here, if the parent has taken a proper assessment of the aptitude of the person yeah. and the intelligence also, 70% of them need not be put to the competition. So this is very relevant. So we call it 
bio, psycho, and social model. Social means the social pressures, that the peer pressure is one. And unfortunately, anxiety disorders, for the sake of the audience, starts very early in second decade, when they are in the teens. So that leads, that, and that leads to a coping by the teenager, as I said, yeah. again, alcohol starts at that stage. Again, uh, drug addiction can start at that stage for that individual. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, uh, school avoidance, school phobia, exam phobia, and all those things. So keep this. There is a biopsycho social factors which are caused. I think there are successful movies which have shown uh, Check the India and all these things which talk yeah. about the competition, the human psychology part of it. And for people, uh, people like you, like like people who are in show business, the biggest problem with social media is followers. You know, how many followers exactly. can you have? It's a huge, how many likes, huge. How many comments? How many? It's how all many... numbers, right? It's all numbers. Yeah, but social media is producing new anxiety disorders. Yes. yes new anxiety is. disorders. It is the Instagram. You try to put the best face forward, exactly. but you hide mm -hmm. the. You try to hide, but at some point of time, it bursts out. And once it bursts out, you are going to show the anxiety symptoms. When you really need friends, you don't know whom to talk to because you, because you always had these shields and all these filters. So where do you show your ugly face? You have no place yeah. to show. And that makes you very lonely. Sometimes in the very early stage, the filters do motivate you. Like the number of likes, for example, the number yeah. of... Uh, Facebook or, uh, comments and comments. all those things, Instagram photos, how, how many would, but what happens is filters soon fade away. And I think what through this program, Kanij is going to tell everyone that the filters are pseudo pops, pseudo pops are pseudo filters. They don't yeah. work for a long time. And there is a time in human relation and human interaction <laughs> is the better filter than this pseudo filter. Yeah. No, for sure. You know, I it, we mentioned the pandemic earlier, which is also something I want to bring up, not just social media, but we're living through a pandemic right now. Uh, it's not been easy for so many people across the board, uh, you know, and I, you can almost say that the, men, the rise of mental health issues during the pandemic were almost the pandemic in itself, um, with, with the amount of people at least coming to the forefront about it. So I want you to understand, like, what is the relationship between the pandemic and um, relationship between the pandemic and anxiety and how do we address this? Uh, I think uh, what has come out with the very recent uh, uh, mon uh, in a Delhi, they have done a survey of about 1,000 people, normal general population, not the people coming to the hospital. They went to yeah. home and home survey. What did they find? 70% of them said that for the first time in their lives, they are experiencing an anxiety that one, they might develop corona, or their relatives might come up. Now, what are the compounding factors? In the neighborhood, there is one case. In the house, there is one case. Yeah. See, in general, everyone is arguing that only 2% or less than 2% die in India. 98% don't die. But the fear is who is going to die? That is the predominant. And the cause of tre treatment and all. So, yeah. see, anxiety, there are two or three anxiety symptoms we have seen in the recent times. First thing is what? The fear of corona. Second thing is fear that you keep washing each time you go out. I know of a patient who washes, uh, uses two bottles of the uh, safety sanitizer. liquefiant sanitizer per day. So that is abnormal anxious. That's called, so we call it op increased anxiety behaviors in terms of obsessive compulsive behaviors. As Corona started, as COVID started and lockdowns happened, people couldn't move out of their houses. So a lot of people, they don't know how to deal with this because they're so the energy is so much they don't know how what to do with it so they're getting a lot of anxiety so some surveys so i have a survey here uh, which is this uh, citizen engagement platform local circles they said there's a 166 percent increase in anxiety from lockdown one to unlock one you know in three to four months this much 166 percent yeah 166 percent 166 percent that's the survey uh, uh, yeah just and yeah, so this is the report, one of the reports there. Simply because we had ways to cope with things, our lifestyle has changed. So kids will go to school, so this time to relax for housewives, you know, for moms staying at home. Correct. Husbands to relax, wives to relax because they are away from each other. And everybody at home, we're all sharing the same space for sleeping, 
for working, for playing, for everything. Okay. There are bound to be conflicts happen, you know. So that this is what is happening. People who are enjoying it, some of them good. They don't have to go office. But now they're tired because when they're at home, meals can come at any time. You know, there used to be a <laughs> cut off time. Now office is yeah. closed. Ho gaya. Office is not closed. There's no office time, so you get meals all the time. So people, in fact, working harder and they have to do home chores. You have to manage office work. So all that stuff is happening. So there's a lot of negativity which has happened. So it is affecting our mental health. It is affecting our physical health because gyms are closed, yoga is closed, parks are closed. People are scared to go out. We are eating a lot of food and we are becoming, you know, fatter and unhealthier that way. And also mental health issues are going up because the way a lot of things could have been dealt with that is not happening. You know, yeah. people are not able to reach out to doctors. Normal OPDs are not working as properly as before. <clears throat> all that is negative thing but let's look at the positive side of thing for us tele psychiatry has started or tele medicine has started so we seeing a lot of doc you know yeah so we seeing a lot of uh, patients online people who were not willing to do this are forced to do this so good they're doing it so a lot of people are reaching out to people all over so i'm i don't have to see patients only in delhi i can see patients anywhere in india and i am already doing that so i'm happily seeing patients all over india because of this so this is the positive side of it people are learning to wash hands before <laughs> eating food <laughs> people are becoming more you know that that way some things have become better one of my pediatrician told me friends my opd is down i said why because kids are not going out to school and they're not infecting each other so there less <laughs> patients that way let's look at the positive yeah. side of it also yeah. yeah dr chaba do you have anything to add to like how we can like what are the what are some of the tools and how do we manage it healthily anxiety is a protective mechanism Yeah. built in to us by the nature so it's evolutionary there are benefits of anxiety anxiety is which helps us survive savannas survive you know tropical forest because we always worried if there rustle in the grass we worried is it a snake or is it an animal and we are taking yeah. protective action towards it so anxiety has a protective mechanism it saves us but okay. in today's world in today's overcharged hyperactive world we are anxious all the time without any clear goals you know because anxiety it creates anxiety so boss doesn't speak to you properly or uh, somebody cuts you off in the traffic and you get anxious or you get angry but you can't do anything about it and that starts building up so it's important to detoxify or de-stress yourself daily so one of the best ways which our ancestors like they have discovered namaste to beat corona <laughs> thousands of years back similarly yeah. they have discovered pranayam so breath work definitely helps and now because it has been certified by western people also so i think a lot of people can use it now yeah, when we yeah. need that appreciation from there so it is breath work really helps so pranayam really helps because there are different different types of pranayams they have their own benefits they calm you down because when you control your breath you control your mind so that's how it goes also yoga helps calming you down and de de de-stressing de- yourself definitely and the different yoga postures this is different lines of yoga uh exercise if you don't like yoga pranayam exercises itself you know any aerobic exercises walk cycling running swimming all that definitely so we need something on a daily basis to de-stress ourselves and you say i'm not a sports person i don't like this breath work and all that stuff i don't do pranayam fine then you can pick up a hobby spend time in a hobby where you doing something like you know gardening something you cooking yeah. you stitching something you painting something which which calms you down so your left brain is calmed down for some time which is for logic and your right brain which is artistic you let it flow for some time you know that is important so I, I, basically the anxiety disorders they are to be managed by the non pharmacological way and the pharmacological way so the yeah. non pharmacological way has been mentioned about the yoga meditation as well as the other techniques with a special specifically designed like relaxation exercises then the deep breathing exercises which is known as pranayama like that thing yeah. it is uh, in the literature will uh, almost for the uh, over centuries and also the one specific technique known as jacobson progressive muscular relaxation by which we just systematically from uh, toe to uh, going moving upwards to the abdomen then the uh, both arms and chest like the from down to up we just contract the each individual muscles and then relax so this is the technique jpm is also is helpful medication has definite role to play overwhelming anxiety panic attack can only be dissolved with the medications and the medication works very well 
So combination approach with the non-pharmacological and the pharmacological measure is the key. Along this, the lifestyle medication also been taught, but other factors like the uh, drinking, uh, excessive use of the tea, coffee, caffeinated beverages, alcohol, this should be prohibited. Brisk exercises has the role by generating more, uh, more, more release of the endorphin in the brain. Endorphin is a substance which is a, has a natural reward kind of activity. And also the most of the anxiety are, are due to one particular neurotransmitter, which is known as norepinephrine. So norepinephrine, it is in, in the flight or fear response. It is secreted from the adrenal gland. So it, uh, it is a situation when the uh, imminent danger is there, the adrenaline yeah. is secreted. But where it is secreted in the excessive and unregulated manner, it, it generates anxiety. So we need to treat, we have to restrict the unregulated release of the norepinephrine, and that is the biological way of research we are looking ahead. Did you get overwhelmed with that? No, I just love that. I love that Dr. Ranjit just has all these stats and numbers and facts and figures. And I was like, it's so nice to have that on the panel, just like actual information. Um, the doctor, I just want to ask um, any other doctors, if, if you find that your anxiety leaves you impaired and almost dysfunctional, what, what would you suggest then? So uh, if you have the anxiety so severe, it starts affecting your work. Let's say you have to travel every day down and you're living in the 30th floor of a building yeah. and you can't enter the lift, then you need to see a doctor quickly. Because how do you go? You know, what do you do? You can't do that for more than three, four days and you'll be tired of being. Okay. So then you definitely go. But if you were living on the ground floor and you have fear of lifts and you don't have, and you're a housewife, you don't have to worry about it. So it also is situational, partly. Okay. Partly it's like a panic. If, if it is like a panic attack where you feel yeah. you, your heart is crushing and you're going to die, then you need rush, rushing to a uh, emergency and that is happening a couple of times, then you definitely need to go see a psychiatrist. So anytime if the anxiety is incapacitating and it is repetitive and it is affecting your daily functioning, your lifestyle or your relationship with the society or work, then you should my, or must go see a psychiatrist. Okay. Okay. And so don't be scared of us. I mean, we are not, uh, I mean, people are very scared of us. There's a myth. The medicines are very addictive. Uh, you're not able to leave medicines. So I said, so I am now in practice for 20 years. I tell yeah. people, if people are addicted to my medicines, I won't have time to talk to you because every patient I'm seeing every day is addicted to me, right? So in 20 years, I would have like thousands of people addicted to me. Correct. They Correct. won't be leaving them off you. Yeah. Yeah. They, so that is not how it is. So it is not like how it is. Only few diseases like schizophrenia, bi bipolar, which, you are, yeah. which are lifelong. You need to continue medicines lifelong. Yeah. You know, so that's us. Dr. Sai, I want to understand from you, like, what is the relationship between anxiety and addiction? For those people who don't know that they have anxiety, what are some of the coping mechanisms they might turn to? Because uh, I think it's important for us to identify that so we might be able to get to the root of, you know, some of our problems if we have addictions. You see, no. first thing which we need to understand is that at the neurochemical level, anxiety is vastly related to a neurochemical called as GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid and its receptors in the brain. Now this same, same receptor is worked on by alcohol or your benzodiazepines, the sedative. So in a person who has anxiety disorder, if he takes alcohol, it relieves his anxiety in such a nice way that he wants to take it again. His brain says that give me more of it. So that I can become very relaxed, I can become cheerful, I can become positive. And he goes into, and unfortunately, somewhere the receptors they take that alcohol and they become used to it. So today, what was enough with one peg, tomorrow requires two, and right. day after requires three. And then subsequently, what happens is that when the alcohol leaves these receptors, they are left craving for it. So that the, the brain goes into what is called as a withdrawal and it craves for that substance. Yeah. So to put forth in a simple way, alcohol works as an anxiolytic. Brain becomes dependent on alcohol for its anxiolysis. And then addiction. And, and thus becomes addicted on alcohol. Okay. Now what happens is that, see, body wants to stay in a particular in a state of equilibrium. Okay, I give it alcohol, it becomes very calm down. 
nice it feels it had got anxiety yeah. i give it, give alcohol it brings the anxiety down but it was to be supposed to be staying in between right uh, i give him alcohol next day again it brings the anxiety down it wanted to stay in between what my body is going to do is that third day it will say that alcohol is going to come at 7 o'clock in the evening so by the time alcohol comes instead of here let me go to a higher level of restlessness Oh. so that when alcohol comes it will just come down to somewhere which is called as equilibrium oh that's interesting okay so what body does is it creates this is what exactly is withdrawal when we say a person goes into a withdrawal when he does not get his uh, quarter or two quarters in the evening yeah. so what body has done is that it has already made itself restless so that alcohol can come it come it down to normalcy yes rather than getting overcome by so hence now after a few days or weeks of consuming that substance will let it be alcohol let it be some sedatives the person's body has got destabilized and it it is already restless so at that moment if it does not get alcohol it brings out all the symptoms of restlessness and double anxiety so again alcohol has to be taken in the quantity which is larger and larger to feel that good so hence a person gets dependent on this is the way a person gets very very badly dependent on these but in case you are suffering from anxiety disorder please don't do substances because yeah. you are very much highly likely to become addicted and you'll find it very difficult to give it up and the quantity of substances are going to go on increasing till it harms your brain and body yeah and it's a it's a vicious circle in which you will find it extremely difficult to come out and another thing which a person which which all our viewers should understand that the same kind of action may take place in the brain with other things also which is which is like sports or which is like yoga or meditation or uh, dancing or uh, whatever it could be different to a different individual you have to find your own uh, sedative you have to find your own uh, tranquilizer When do I see a psychiatrist as opposed to when do I see a, a, a psychologist. psychologist or a psychotherapist? So we both work in in conjunction with each other. So, so for so for lay people listening, psychiatrists are like orthopedician, haddi ke doctor, yes. and psychologists are like you know physiotherapists. Yeah. 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 So you need physiotherapists also because you need to do the movement. So if you need a lot of exercise, you need mental exercises. You need relaxation techniques. need to teach them you know learn them it spend more time understanding what are the causes of anxiety then it's better to you know then a psychiatrist will themselves say okay why don't you go see my psychologist or go see that psychologist yeah. and you know work on therapy on that whereas if there is a panic attack happening then no no uh, amount of relaxation can help it you need a medicine that time under the tongue to relax yourself okay. so there is a difference so a doctor decides i mean a psychiatrist can de- themselves decide uh, you know so it's better to first visit a psychiatrist and let the let the do- let the, do- let the uh, doctor decide you know when do you need medicines and when do you need therapy how can we help if we identify in our loved ones that they are suffering from anxiety or going through uh, any mental health actually we can even broaden it how how do we as a fa- as family or friends or loved ones help them what can we do for them see yeah. talking listening suggesting good food suggesting walking lifestyle and relaxation techniques are all good for everyone in this world everyone in this world normal or yes. abnormal but when we talk about disability we are suggesting especially if there is a disability go quickly so what you can do is reduce their stigma if they have anything on or fears if they have about going to a psychiatrist in today's world thankfully information is there somebody would So just uh, just please go but at the same time i would ask you that you give that positive thrust humor positive humor life positive life go to a yes. psychiatrist and they need how can i tell if i have anxiety like how is it different from maybe overthinking or paranoia or being tense or being hyper how can i how do i what can i what do i have to go through to be like yes that's anxiety i have identified it yeah the many people they don't know their anxieties but uh, yeah. when you talk to them there uh, something was unusual during this for about a couple of months once the once the pandemic started 
they some feel they they, they have decreased sleep they are getting more irritable uh, and uh, they are th- they are worrying more about uh, this past and also they, you know that they already they explained one of them as my colleagues that they have uh, the symptoms uh, phys- physical symptoms like palpitation tremors then soaking sensation this is a physical symptom and psychological symptoms like they feel decreased concentrations and they cannot concentrate on watching tvs or uh, reading newspapers and they're getting irritable for a small small reasons so these are all the things make us that oh this is not happened in the past in the in the in the in the, in the before pandemic they are very normal but after the pandemic started them some cycle they feel they as if they are feeling in age they have a lot of thinking negative thinking it comes again and again they have a lot of worries they feel tense they feel as if they are in the age so these are all the indirectly uh, you can come to a conclusion the patient is an anxious so dr sarve i wanted to just maybe if you could help me understand like the difference between depression and anxiety like when do i know which one how do i identify either of them so difference between depression and anxiety the basic difference between these two words is depression is udasi sadness now it along with sadness comes other things also which i'll just talk about and basically anxiety is chinta worry ah okay nice. so two are absolutely different now one is where a person feels sad so it is more of a disorder of mood okay your mood goes on the lower side you start feeling low you start because of that low feeling you don't feel like doing anything you don't enjoy anything happiness is not there some people with uh, depression they experience what is called as a psychomotor retardation means at the level of mind and body they feel absolutely slow dull yeah and these things they really make the person understand a person understands that i should not be like this but he just cannot get himself out of it right and anxiety per se is more of worry you are worried about what is going to happen so this worrying which i was talking about is accompanied by racing thoughts which are negative and which are na, just to see what can go wrong in that situation it is accompanied by whenever there is a issue or a problem the body needs to be more energetic to solve that problem so it is accompanied by release of something called as adrenaline this adrenaline when there is some sort of a real problem you can real in the sense some sort of a physical problem the same adrenaline is going to make you uh, completely geared up to fight or run away from it depending on your mood if your mood is yeah na uh, absolutely strong and aggressive at that moment you'll fight if your mood is down and low you will run away yeah or you can also freeze with this adrenaline but in case of anxiety man i'll just go to one simple fact that human being would have a same response from the body as what he would have in a real situation and in a imaginary situation right right the body the body doesn't know <clears throat> right so in a real situation that adrenaline is required but the same adrenaline comes with imagination also and what does it lead to it leads to palpitations it leads to a dry mouth it leads to feeling panicky it leads to a sinking feeling and you get what is called as a physical response of the anxiety and that physical response is becomes becomes you know, makes you restless makes you troubled and cannot help you to in fact rather than concentrating on things it makes you so restless that you cannot really concentrate also and the person goes into an entire cycle of instead of sorting out things which you are worrying about yeah. you just go into a bigger cycle of worrying feeling more oh, restless right. feeling physically also bad and then becoming more worried because you are in this helpless situation yeah and thus the anxiety increases and you go into a cycle of anxiety so when does anxiety become a disorder yeah is it so a disorder I've, anxiety itself is not a disorder but it when it impairs your personal life the, when you infer the day to day functioning then oh, it will wow. become a disorder okay did you first were uh, functioning social functioning when the anxiety impair your uh, your uh, occupational functioning or day to day activities it impair it then you became a disorders so anxiety is a cluster of symptoms 
we used to call the generalized anxiety disorder panic disorder obsessive compulsive disorder these are all come under the anxiety spectrum Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, that's very really, okay. Yeah. So OCD, yeah, yeah. Uh, panic disorder, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, attacks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. These are all under the yeah. It is come under oh. the anxiety spectrum. So okay. anxiety is just a symptoms. Like if, as I said earlier, like is there anxiety are two common yes. ones. Physical common and psychological common. Uh, physical common is palpitation, tremors, giddiness, choking sensation, difficulty yes. breathing. Uh, these are all the physical common. Psychological common is tense, worries, inability to relax, con- you cannot concentrate. These are all the psychological common. This can occur in any. You come across a stress, it may it also, but it can also occur in OCD people. Uh, yeah, if it comes episodically. for some time you did suddenly the patient had a severe heart beat heart beat rapid heart beat will be occur and it may last for around 10 minutes 15 minutes they feel the patient may feel afraid that they developed a heart attack then we use called as a panic disorder is a disorder so oh, anxiety okay. is a is a symptoms so okay. it's very severe uh, then you called as a disorder so the last thing i just wanted to ask um, uh, dr devendra sabe was do you uh, how do you think we could deal with anxiety like what are the healthy ways like now you just spoke about dealing like you just mentioned yoga and exercise etc could you elaborate more on how we could deal with uh, anxiety in a, in a healthier way like for ourselves how do we how do we do this for ourselves if we are suffering from anxiety and anxiousness see first of the foremost the, all of us know that if we think right we are less likely to get anxious yeah it's very, very easy to say that uh, exactly. don't think like this don't think uh, like that Negative. think like this so it's very very simple thing is that if you think right you know, half your problems are solved now first and the foremost you know, i'll ask you this question how do we think i don't know Just... you've been thinking since i think you know, the time you learned language i'll give you a clue so maybe thinking right is maybe like giving myself affirmations No. That's a way of thinking. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> like, so, so Tani, I'll tell you the thing which we have been doing for the most of our life. We almost all of us don't know what exactly and how exactly we are doing it. It's very simple. We are speaking to ourselves. Okay. Aren't we? When you yeah. think what you do, you just talk with yourself. Correct. That's it. That's what I meant. Like giving my talking. Yeah, talking to myself. Yeah. Talk with ourselves. and when we talk with ourselves we do it so for so many years you have been talking with yourself but when i asked you this question you were not aware of it yeah what we should understand is that first thing we should become aware of what we are talk- talking with ourselves yes so a time it takes a little bit of time to just keep a track of what is going in your head that is what you're talking and it's as simple as this like i'm talking with you no right now i can just change my words tone and everything similarly i can change my words tone of what yeah. i'm talking with myself also and most of the people who are talking to themselves in a negative manner in a manner in which he can make himself worried are those who are going to be patient for anxiety if you as it's as simple as this if you're aware and you just change what you're talking to yourself it makes a big difference that is one thing second is our no, thought process is usually and completely dependent on our mood on the day which you are in a good mood you are going to think positively about everything yes you are going to think happily about everything you are going to think no, you are going to excuse people you are going to forgive people you are going to let go of things and in fact if you are happy and successful you will stand up and proudly talk about incidences which have been worse in your life also yeah and another thing is that our mind believes what we say that you always yes. remember we believe whatever whoever is closest to us and whoever understands us the most and there is nobody better than than for yourself so each word which you say evokes these sort of emotions in which in you yeah so you should develop a ability to help others out yes. help people out advise them for positivity bring in happiness in others lives and one last thing which is is use the power of a smile so it's god's natural anti antidepressant yeah and i'll tell you in all these things which i said when you start realizing that small things can give you happiness yeah then you stop bothering about the huge kind of things which you're aiming for to become happy 
and it removes a lot of pressure from your head to you you get the energy to in fact yes. get more but at the same time the pressure is gone now i love that these are explicit uh, actions we can take and use to actually decrease anxiety this is not uh, like theory uh, these are not philosophies these are actual actions you can take uh, and use actual actions which you can take yep. and use in a very practical ones and apart from this being physically healthy is something which i really believe is a source of happiness no you can always play chess because i love chess yeah very yeah. good chess. chess is good very good in fact no but one sport in your life it is very important and no once you play sport and you are active and you are full of no, no energy you can eat whatever you want to eat Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, otherwise everybody says that don't eat this and don't eat that. Yeah, it's not working for me. I'm working out and I'm eating everything, and I'm. I'm putting well, that my sounds better, huh? Funny is that doesn't that sound better? <laughs> no, but it's no. I, actually, working out after I started working out in my life, it's been huge. I've been going to therapy for four years, and this is one of my main tools to managing a lot of my um, mental health issues yes, is exercise. because it releases endorphins in your brain and and these are simple things i have many things more to tell but then these of are simple course. things let's land in uh, let's yes. not for those people because then it loses its value <laughs> thank you so yes. much dr prasad rao dr ranjan bhattacharya dr vishal chabra dr paneer salwan and and last but not least dr devendra save thank you so much for joining us